some scientists believe that 440 million years ago, Earth was hit by a gamma ray burst, or GRB, a deadly beam of radiation that devastated life on the planet. Could you survive if we were struck by a gamma ray burst again? In the first minutes after the disaster, billions of people are already dead or dying in the impact zone. An area including Africa, Europe, and the Middle East. Essentially, life on the side of the impact has been extinguished. In Northern England, the lone survivors are a group of miners who weathered the blast under 4,000 feet of earth and rock. Now, they travel the countryside, living off canned and other preserved goods. But they don't realize that the gamma ray burst has poisoned their food supply. So gamma ray burst, this intensity can produce radioactive or activated isotopes from the food that can be very dangerous. The miner's lifeline is thin, and it's only a matter of time. In the Americas, on the side of Earth opposite the impact zone, the situation is desperate. After the gamma ray bursts electromagnetic pulse zapped electronics, a global power blackout went into effect. The effect of it would cascade to give you a collapse of telecommunications. We would see a massive short circuiting of all major electrical systems on the planet Earth. For people in Atlanta, Seattle, Rio de Janeiro, and every large North and South American city in the non-impact zone, power grids are down and commerce is frozen. You are literally left in the dark, without heat, without light, without food. Grocery stores are mobbed, and desperation sets in as people fight over a shrinking food supply. Ventilators, dialysis machines, and backup systems fail, all but ensuring the deaths of thousands of hospital patients. We live in a bubble. This bubble is energized by electricity. But what happens if something pops that bubble? Without backups, without heat, without food, then you begin to realize that civilization itself will begin to degenerate as a consequence. The usual crowds of summer beachgoers are nowhere to be seen. From San Diego to Galveston to Daytona Beach, the few people moving around in the 100 degree heat are covered from head to toe. When the gamma ray burst slammed into Earth's atmosphere. It ripped apart the ozone layer, exposing the survivors to a new radiation threat. The ozone layer in our atmosphere is one of the most beneficial things on the planet. We have this star in the sky, the sun, that dumps ultraviolet radiation at us all the time. It keeps us alive, but without the ozone, it would cook us and kill us. The side of Earth facing it gets completely depleted of ozone. All the ozone gets destroyed, essentially zero left. Now, you've still got 100% on the other side of Earth, but as the atmosphere mixes together in the ensuing days and weeks, effectively what you'll have is 50% of the normal ozone throughout the world. If you go out in the weeks after this event with any kind of unprotected skin, you're getting doses 
of UV radiation that would take you normally hours in minutes. You're talking a serious sunburn in 10, 15, 20 minutes. Life-threatening if you're exposed for hours. This is a get inside or perish situation. The long-term effects are that UV is coming through and interacting with living cells. That much larger dose of ultraviolet radiation will change DNA and can create cancers. Skin cancers will rise dramatically. The only form of protection is to avoid the sun. They're going to have to put on extra heavy-duty clothing. They're going to have to put on sunglasses. They're going to have to cover every inch of their body, realizing that the sun that gives us life and nourishment is now bathing us in a ultraviolet radiation that can eventually kill us. Lifestyles will change because you have to in order to survive. Think of living the entirety of the remainder of your life inside or underground. This is what we will have to do to survive. As the ultraviolet radiation threatens mankind, Earth's ecosystems begin to collapse. Ultraviolet radiation will, over time, sterilize the upper meters of the Earth's oceans. If we were to suddenly remove the top 30 feet of life-giving food in the ocean, everything else will begin to suffer. It's what we call a trophic collapse. The food chain itself collapses, taking everything else out with it. The phytoplankton in the ocean are basically little green plants, single cell plants, and they produce about half the world's oxygen, which means they're the base of the food chain in the ocean. Larger things eat them and so on up the food chain. Fishermen, accustomed to harvesting large bounties of fish from the ocean, would see something very different. They would see a massive die-off. Without adequate food and water, or electrical power, North and South American cities in the non-impact zone are now in peril. Food supply, average city community has at most about two weeks worth of food on hand. You go without any significant caloric intake after about two weeks, then you start becoming more susceptible to disease and dying. We are children when it comes to understanding gamma ray bursts, their history. Maybe, just maybe it's happened many times in our history, we don't know. We didn't think that there could be rocks from heaven coming down, killing the dinosaurs. But now we know better. How many more gamma ray bursters are just waiting to fire.